Okay. My name is Seth, and I'm a cartoonist from Canada. And primarily, I guess I'm known for um, a couple of graphic novels, but probably It's a Good Life If You Don't Weaken is the book people most know me for, and maybe for Clyde fans, which, you know, was just collected recently. Mm -hmm. um, we, we were talking a minute ago about how you, you were a Marvel fan as a kid. Can you tell me about comics, as you know, how, how they affected you and got you sure. wanting to make comics? Yeah, well, you know, it's interesting. I, was, I grew up in the 1970s when I was a, you know, a young child and a teenager and um, the world was really different then and I was in a small town and so there were probably three main sources of information and, edu and uh, entertainment and, and in that small town and that would be television, uh, the library and the third one was the newsstand which would be at the drugstore and I, I mean, you know I discovered comics probably in grade seven, I think, really. I mean, every kid read comics, so I'd read Archie and stuff like that. But I think I started, I, I watched the Spider-Man cartoon show that I loved as a kid, and one day I just said to myself, I think there are comic books of Spider-Man. So I went to the drugstore, and I started buying Marvel comics, and very quickly I was, like, um, hooked on them. I'd say within a month I was buying all the Marvel comic books. And it was a very potent experience for me. I mean, these comics were really aimed at exact age group, you know, a young male just coming into puberty. This the stuff's all about power fantasies and sex, it's all sexually oriented. It's very interesting how powerful that stuff was, and I mean, it changed my life. I mean, I wouldn't be here as a cartoonist if it wasn't for those comics. I loved Peanuts and other things too, but those really were the thing that made me sit down and draw comics all through my teen years, made me learn the comics medium. As an adult, that wasn't the kind of comics I wanted to do, but that's where I put the time in. You don't become a cartoonist without putting that time in to learn the medium, to learn how to draw. It's like you needed those years, so it was super important to me. How, how did you finally get in to the industry, so to speak, your first Yeah. Well, I went to art school after high school because I figured you had to go somewhere. I didn't know what to do and I wanted to be a cartoonist and it wasn't a clear path. I wasn't, I certainly never crossed my mind to like go to New York and go to Marvel Comics. I did. I knew I wasn't ready for something like that. So I went to art school and um, in art school I lost interest in those kind of comics. I started to get a broader kind of interest in in art and storytelling, but I'd spent so much time thinking about comics that it was like, I, I always say I was kind of tricked into staying a cartoonist, even when I lost interest in the subject matter. So it took me a few years to figure out I wanted to start telling stories in the comics medium about real life. And in that time, I discovered artists like Robert Crumb and the Hernandez brothers. And this showed me that there was a way to do this. But I suppose what got me in the industry was around the time after, you know, a year or two after art school, I, uh, I went to a small company there called Vortex Comics, which was publishing a comic called Mr. X that the Hernandez brothers drew. And I brought in some terrible artwork to show, and um, they sent me away to do some, they said, bring it back, you got something more interesting later. I came back later, and coincidentally, when I came back, it was just around the time they were looking for an artist to replace the Hernandez brothers. And I was young and foolish enough to think like I could come on that book after those guys. And, um, but it was a good learning experience. It's what taught me kind of like, it was, a good, it was good to be doing some comics that I didn't write because I wasn't ready to write anything good. And my artwork was still pretty primitive, but that experience of seeing the work in print is, is very important for a cartoonist. You know, that is a learning experience that you can't get any other way. You have to see it printed and see what's wrong with it. So, a couple of years of working on that really prepared me to do my own work. How, how long, like, did you have day jobs and things while you were doing this? or And, yeah. and what, what were you doing? And when, when did you know it was okay to yeah. get rid of the day job? Well, you know, I didn't have a day job when I worked on Mr. X. What I had was a very supportive publisher who was like basically doling out enough money for me to live on while I worked on it. Now I was obviously living pretty low on the scale at that point, you know, it's like I was 23 or 24 years old and I just had a divey apartment and 
you know, I didn't ha I didn't have a lot of money needs. I'd certainly been working, you know, crummy jobs before that. I'd been working in restaurants and I'd worked in a factory. But during that period is basically when I got used to um, just being an artist. And I've never worked another job since then. But that's not because I've made so much money in comics. It's because I realized kind of early on that if you want to be a cartoonist, you have to figure out how to make money in, as, in the arts. And that's not always by making comics. So very quickly on, I realized that the way for me to make money at that point was illustration. So I put together a portfolio around the time I left Mr. X, when I was planning to go off and do my own book, and I started to do magazine illustration. And so from that point on, I've always done other work on the side. Now magazine illustration is not so lucrative anymore. I don't do that much magazine illustration. But I do, now at this point in my career, I do book design, design in general, a lot of that sort of things. You know, I work for a variety of places. I do gallery art. Um, it's like very diverse because just, you know, you build a wider range of, of um, skills as you go on. And as, you're, as your name, as you build a career, better opportunities come to you. So as I don't draw as many pictures now of like, you know, businessmen, you know, or about, you know, the boring stuff of most illustration work, now it's like I'd be more likely to say, um, maybe I'll do a children's book or something like that. They're better opportunities. They're still diff they're not comics. You're still doing your comic, and your comic is not your main source of money. But it's all part of the same body of work now. So I don't even really think of it any longer about where the money's coming from. It comes from a variety of sources. Sometimes a check comes in, you're like from comics, and you're like, oh, great. And then the next week, it comes from a book design. The week after that, you sold some art. It's very diverse.